couple of bodies on the swan here. And what we're going to do is place this tube into the swan's stomach. We've got some warm water flowing through the tube. And water is going to fill the stomach. And then we've got the swan tilted downwards here so that everything is going to kind of retrograde and come back out. And the hope is that the water will get into the stomach, will mix with everything in there. There's some food in the stomach as well. And then things are going to start coming back out, including hopefully the lead pieces. It's a very long esophagus, so we need a long tube to get all the way down there to the stomach. So one thing we have to be really careful of is we need to really watch the heart rate and the respiration of this bird because we're pushing a lot of water into this bird's body. And what can happen is that can actually activate part of their nervous system and cause their heart rate and their respiratory rate to drop. So we really need to make sure that we're keeping a close eye on that so the bird doesn't stop breathing or that their heart doesn't go into cardiac arrest. Anesthesia also will depress their respiratory system and their heart rate. So we try to get them flushed as quickly as we can so we can wake them up from anesthesia so they're not under for a long amount of time. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of pull this tube in and out. This is going to kind of push some of that material in the stomach around. Sometimes the tube can kind of get caught up in there. We've got some pieces coming out here, whether it's lead or not yet, I don't know. Um, they will have some pebbles and rocks in their stomach as well, which can look very similar to lead. So. Once we get a bunch of debris out of his stomach, we can kind of sift through at the bottom here and see if it looks like we got the lead pieces. Luckily, they were large pieces, so that makes it a little bit easier to identify them. Sometimes swans will come in with itty bitty tiny pieces of lead about the size of the tip of a pencil. And there will be several of them, so it's hard to say if you got them all. So what we'll do is we'll take another radiograph of the bird in just a few minutes to see if those lead pieces are still present or not. But it looks like we're getting some, some good chunks here in the bottom of the bucket. So I think that we are, we are successful at getting some, if not all, of the lead pieces out already. We also have to watch too because the pieces will get caught up underneath their tongue or here in these little lamellae along the edges of their beak. They use those to filter out um, food in the water, filter through the plant material. And the lead pieces may get hung up there, so we have to make sure that we're not missing a piece because even a, the teeniest piece of lead, see there's a, a little speck right there, it might just be a pebble, but we just want to make sure that we get that out. The tiniest piece of lead can cause a toxicity, so we got to make sure we get all of it out. How are we doing, Claire? Good? Yeah. Perfect. So this is a very safe procedure for the bird. It's not hurting the bird at all. Um, the main risks of this procedure are actually related to the anesthesia itself. Um, so otherwise the water itself isn't going to hurt the bird at all or cause any long-term damage. The tube's very smooth. It's not going to damage the esophagus or anything like that. So um, depression of the respiratory system and the heart rate as well as um, any aspiration risk are the main risks. So we got quite a bit of debris here at the bottom of the bucket, so I think we're gonna go ahead and pull the tube out here, and we're going to take another radiograph and see where we're at and if there's still lead present. looks like you can see down here at the bottom of the bucket there's some darker pieces down there and those might be the lead pieces that we're worried about. So we'll take our radiograph and see if those are our lead pieces and if we need to do further lavaging.